So I've been working with Remix for a couple of my projects now, and I wanted to note three important distinctions between using Remix and using React to build full stack web applications. The first difference is that in Remix, we use forms over JavaScript's fetch function. Remix puts a heavy emphasis on building progressively enhanced applications, and that means that our applications should be able to run without JavaScript. Now, in order to do that, Remix uses HTML forms, and that's how we're able to provide that full stack web application interactivity. Now, in contrast, React and APIs, when we're building with these technologies, we'll be using JavaScript's fetch function in order to make API requests and handle these with JavaScript. So let me show you what this looks like in practice. Here I have my React single page application. This is my dashboard component. And anytime any of these variables change in my client, I'll go ahead and fetch the data, make a new get request to my API, update the state of my component, and then that'll change what I'm rendering. Now, if we were to look at the Remix approach to this, instead of using JavaScript, what we'll do is we'll use a form. Here I have a simple search form with method get. Anytime this form gets submitted, the form will trigger a navigation, add the query parameter, and then we'll be able to access that query parameter for that search when we're rendering the component. The second difference is that in Remix, we think in loaders and actions over get and post APIs. Loaders and actions are these two new concepts introduced by Remix's full stack data flow. Loaders execute on the server before we server side render the component, and they give us the opportunity to go ahead and fetch data from a database or an API before we server side render the component. Actions, on the other hand, well, they support form posts and they give us the opportunity to make any mutation that needs to be executed on the server, such as a, a create or an edit type of interaction. Now, these are approximately analogous to get and post requests. Loaders are similar to get requests and actions are similar to post requests, and they allow us to provide that full stack end to end experience. When we would be building a React single page application or a Next.js application with an API, we'd actually be writing those uh, as, as separate APIs, either within our framework in the case of Next.js or as an express or serverless API. So let me show you what this looks like in practice in Remix. Here I have a notes route. I have a loader that will go ahead and retrieve the notes from my, my database in this sample application. In my notes component, I can go ahead and access the typed data returned from my loader and use that to render my notes component, my notes page. And in addition, I also have in this notes page a form, a form that allows me to create a new note. Here you'll notice that it's a post form and what you'll see is that I also have an action in place which allows me to handle the creation of a new note. So that's how you can use loaders and actions in Remix, which is very different from building get and post APIs uh, when we're building with React and an API. The third distinction is that we favor server-side state over client-side state in Remix. In Remix, we think of the browser and the UI as a function of the persisted state on the server. The way we do this is that by having the action and the loader assigned to the same URL, when the action gets triggered, Remix will know that it needs to reload the loader for this specific route. And so essentially our UI is always kept up to date because the loader for that route is automatically re-triggered when the action is called. This is compared to building an API uh, with a React application in that we'll have separate states for the local JavaScript React state that's on the client browser and the persisted state that is on the server. And we need to handle the syncing between these two states with revalidations manually. Now, the fourth notable difference is that in Remix, we think of data access at the root level rather than the component level. As I mentioned before, in Remix, we have loaders and actions which give us the ability to make queries and mutations, but these are actually bound to the root level. So that means that for our entire page, we have a single loader and action over which we have to go ahead and determine which data we have to load and which actions we need to support. 
Now compare this to React single page application or the other React frameworks where we can think of data access at the component level. So for instance, if we have a node component and we have specific APIs for nodes, we can go ahead and configure that at the node component level. And the same thing if we have other components. So that's an additional flexibility that we have when we are using other types of React framework. But in the case of Remix, Remix makes this decision because we get to have a better end user experience by minimizing the request waterfall that can come out of a usage of components like this. Now I know that we can have data access at the component level in Remix using the full stack component pattern, but this is really using JavaScript rather than using the loaders and the actions that provide us with progressively enhanced applications. I'm really looking forward to seeing Remix adopt React server components, and I'm curious to see how they'll add it to their own framework, because at this point we'll be able to have component level data access, which I'm really excited for. So all in all, I really enjoy using Remix. It's a different mindset, but this allows us to build progressively enhanced applications by default. And Remix has committed to adopting React server components in the future. So I'm really excited for what's to come with Remix. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.